good evening everyone i hope my screen is uh, visible and i'm audible as well yes you are and the screen is also visible thank you for the confirmation sir all right guys so welcome you all in our today's the most session of our one month online hr training course in which uh, we cover up these three modules the first one is the statutory and the legal compliance in which we cover up the major labor laws of india such as uh, the provident fund act esi act uh, payment of uh, gratuity act payment of bonus act maternity benefit act these kind of facts we cover up in the uh, first module that is the statutory and the legal compliance and we majorly focus on the practical working aspects of these acts second module is the compensation benefits in which we discuss about the ctp structure and its components understanding the payroll management income tax calculation professional tax calculation loss of pay overtime uh, payments leave and holidays full and final settlement these all on the practical basis third module is again the recruitment selection and again we focus on the practical working areas of the recruitment selection such as uh, preparing the job descriptions specifications sourcing strategies live training on the nokki.com sourcing skills training methodologies uh, mass mailing and job posting linkedin aps rms social sites for the recruitment cv writing and the interview skills these things we discuss during the recruitment and selection session so these are the three modules that we cover up in our this one month online hr training course for which we have conducted the demo session today and in this demo session we would be covering the compensation and benefits but moving uh, uh, before the compensation benefits let's have a poll here to have an understanding of the kind of audiences we are having today right so i'm just launching the poll you just need to provide the inputs of your experience range so that we can have an understanding of sir your voice is low Oh, it is okay. Am I am I audible, guys? Now it is okay. You need to be slightly louder. So, guys, the poll is live. You can share your inputs, provide your experience. If you are a fresher or you are having experience. Okay. so the majority we are having today are freshers so there are around 64% we are having fresh and rest are the experience so i'm just sending further oh. oh. but still bhai mera aawaz nahi aa raha hai guys i would request you all to keep dheeraj i muted everyone you can unmute yourself all right thank you sir All right, so guys, today's topic is compensation and benefits management, right? In this today's demo session, we will understand what is compensation and benefits, how it is designed, and which are the major components we uh, we need to consider at the time of designing the compensation and benefits. And we will have an understanding of actual offer letters and understanding their annexures. Then we'll have a live uh, CTC uh, uh, annexure preparation on Excel as well, using all those important components of the compensation and benefits. Now again, we are having a poll here. This is majorly related to this topic only: compensation and benefits. The question is net take-home salary. The statement is net take-home salary of all employees getting a CTC of 10 lakhs in 10 different companies would be same. Is this statement is true or false? So you guys need to answer. I'm just launching the poll. The poll is live now. You can share your inputs. Here, the statement is net take-home salary of all employees getting a CTC of ten lakhs in ten different companies would be same. Is this statement is true or false? You can share your inputs on this. Okay, so the majority is saying that this statement is false. Eighty-nine percent are saying it's false, and only eleven percent are saying it's true. So yes, guys, the correct answer is that the statement is false. Let's move further. Let's start the topic. Now let's have an understanding of what is compensation and what are benefits. So what is compensation? Compensation is defined as the total amount of monetary pay provided to an employee. It is the money given for the work. So any payment that any employer is making to their employee in form of money is known as compensation majorly the salary that an employer is paying to their employee is known as the compensation the salary majorly is in the form of money right so that kind of payment is referred as compensation now what is benefit all non financial form of compensation offered in addition to the cash salary 
is known as the benefit. So any benefit or perk given by the company to their employees over and above the salary that the company is giving to them is known as the benefit. Right? These are majorly in the non-financial forms. Right? These can be medical insurance provided by the company, other infrastructure facilities provided by the company over and above the salary of the employee. Those things are referred as the benefit. Now, there is a saying that benefits have no direct effect on the employee's performance. However, in a benefits do contribute to the low satisfaction level. So it means that if we are providing so many benefits to our employees and uh, we are assuming that they will perform well because of those benefits, this is not like that. But if we are going to cut down any of the existing benefits or uh, the company is not giving any of them, will surely lead to the lower satisfaction level of the employee. Hence, the benefit is equally important as compensation. Now, let's understand the components of compensation and benefits. Let's first understand the components of the compensation, the monetary part of compensation and benefit package. This includes the basic pay. Basic pay is the major salary of the employee. This is the fixed pay that we also know as the base pay of the employee, right? So the components of compensation are basic pay, allowances. Basic pay and allowances makes the gross salary of the employee. These allowances can be of uh, any expenses, can be given for any kind of expenses which is related to the company's work. These can be travel, legal, housing, medical, these kind of allowances can be given to the employee. Commissions and incentives, overtime pay, bonuses, profit sharing, stock option, all these if you uh, notice here, these all refers to the money. These are given in the form of money. Hence, they are the components of the compensation, right? Now, moving to the benefit. What kind of benefit the companies are giving to their employees? So, benefits majorly uh, depends upon the company's policy and the kind of benefits they are offering to, to their employees. These can be holidays, leaves, welfare facilities, cafeterias, infrastructure facilities, rewards and recognition, insurance and medical retirement benefits. These kind of benefits are majorly opted by the organization to offer to their employees over and above the compensation, over and above the salary to the employees. There are some other benefits also which are nowadays being practiced under the organization. These can be health insurances, dental insurance, life insurance, retirement plans, gym fitness, vision care, personal leave, sick leave, child care, paid leave, etc. And there are many other form of benefits as well, which are nowadays being practiced by the organization. Right. So benefits, we are going to stop here only because we are majorly uh, move, moving ahead with the compensation because compensation is the wider area and benefits majorly depends upon the company's policy, what kind of benefits they want to offer to their employees. Right. So now let's move ahead with the compensation. Now let's understand the compensation of how the compensation and benefits are decided. How do we decide the salary of an employee? Right. So let's have an understanding of that. So let's understand the factors uh, becomes important at the time of deciding the salary, which are the factors which are responsible to fix the salary of the employee. So these factors are the minimum wages decided by the state government. Second is the cost of living and locations where the person is going to work and uh, live. That cost of living of that state is also important at the time of deciding the wages of an employee. Ability to pay, the kind of uh, CTC, the, uh, the employer ha has decided for any specific position, right? So ability of pay is also important factor while deciding the wages of an employee. Now supply and demand, what kind of uh, manpower is required for any specific work and what is the requirement of that manpower in the job market? That also becomes an important factor while deciding the uh, salary of any position. Labor unions and the industries also plays a major role at the time of deciding the salary of the employee. Now let's understand the minimum wage. Minimum wages is the most important criteria at the time of deciding the wages of an employee. And the minimum wages decided by the state government. Every state decides the minimum wage of their state as per the cost of living of their state. Right? And they do, they do multiple kind of surveys to decide the minimum wages. Right? This minimum wages is categorized in the uh, in some of the categories of the employment, these can be of unskilled employees for the semi-skilled employees, for the highly skilled employees and uh, other categories as well. This factor deciding minimum wages, what are the factors becomes important at, at, at the time of fixation of the minimum wages. 
these factors can be the cost of living and location labor supply and demand labor unions and industry so these are the factors which plays an important role at the time of fixation of the minimum wages of the state so the state government also go, uh, go through uh, through these kind of surveys to decide the minimum wage of that state now paying below the minimum wage is illegal so when if you are paying below the minimum wage what have been decided by the uh, the uh, state that becomes illegal that is non compliant so whenever you are fixing the basic salary of an employee you need to check out the minimum wage of the state for that scheduled employment and you should not pay below the minimum wage decided by the state government it should always be either equals to or more than that minimum wage of that state now there is the question that you guys need to answer in the chat box the question is why unskilled labor in bihar is getting less salary than the unskilled labor working in delhi what is the major reason why the person who is working in bihar is getting the lower wages than the uh, same category of worker worker working in delhi what is the possible reason you can provide your answers in the chat box what could be the possible reason that the person who is working in bihar is getting the lower wages than the person who is working in delhi yes yes cost of living is less in bihar yes due to location cost of living is higher in delhi yes now the combination of everything like cost of living labor supply and demand everything what we get we get the minimum wages so this is the major factor why the uh, uh, the unskilled labor who is working in bihar is getting the lower wages than the delhi because the minimum wage of bihar is lesser than the delhi or any of the other me metropolitan state right so that is the major factor why the person is getting the lower wages than the person who is working in delhi now what if the same person get transferred to bangalore or karnataka he will start getting the wages according to the karnataka minimum wages right the higher salary as per the minimum wages of karnataka state now there is another poll we are having this is majorly a kind of survey now the survey is what is the must have attribute to make someone the preferred choice during an interview the options are communication skills practical skills and knowledge degrees and certifications so i'm just launching this poll here you guys can share your inputs the poll is live you can share your inputs now which is the must have attribute to make someone the preferred choice during an interview the option are communication skills practical skills and knowledge degrees and certifications you all can share your inputs guys okay so the majority is saying practical skills and knowledge 52% have voted for practical skills and knowledge 43% have voted for communication skills and only 3% have voted for the degrees and certifications so thank you so much for your inputs guys i'm just sending this poll here only and let's move ahead there are some of the very frequently used terms which you all must to be aware of these are the words like take home salary the net take home salary monthly salary that is also known as the gross salary ctc cost to the company so what all these are what is the meaning of net take home salary what is the meaning of gross salary what is the meaning of cost to the company we will understand all these in detail in the coming slides right so first take the net take home salary what is net take home salary the payable salary after deduction so the net take home salary is the amount which becomes payable to an employee after all kind of deduction so deduction can be statutory or any other form of deduction statutory deduction majorly include the deduction of the pf deduction of the esi deduction of lwf or tds so all these kind of deduction when we apply the deductions on the monthly gross income of an employee we get the net payable salary of the employee right so the net salary is the payable salary after all kind of deductions from the employee salary now what is the monthly gross salary the monthly gross salary is the payable salary before deductions majorly the monthly gross salary is the monthly income of that employee monthly income before any kind of deductions so this is the payable salary before any kind of deduction now in this monthly gross salary only we apply the employee deductions and we get the net take home salary of that employee right 
so net take home salary is the amount becomes payable after all all kind of deduction monthly gross salary is the payable salary before any kind of deduction third is the ctc cost to the company total amount the one employee so this is cost of the company as the name suggests cost of the company is the total cost of which is one to one employee it's a total expenditure which is done by our company on any employee right that includes majorly the monthly cost salary of that employee plus all the kind of contributions done by employer in behalf of the statutory area huh? majorly the monthly cost salary plus all the statutory come contribution such as the pfsi statutory bonus and all so combination of all these we get the cost to the company right we get the ctc cost to the company right so these are the major terms which are used at the time of designing a ctc structure so having an understanding of all these terms is very important now this is the second last tool we are having this again is question related to the next slides which we are going to take up so the question is ctc cost to the company will be my net take home salary is this statement is true or false ctc will be my net take home salary so this statement is true or false i'm just launching this poll you guys can provide your inputs the poll is live now ptc is equals to net take home salary this statement is true or false okay so i've got 83% of votes for false and only 19% for true so that's correct guys this statement is false because ctc can never be equals to the net take home salary of an employee and we'll understand why in the coming slides so i'm just ending this poll and moving further now and let's understand how the compensation and benefits is designed so whenever we do a salary break up how do we do that what are the steps that we need to follow at the time of time of doing the salary break up at the time of designing a compensation and benefit structure so here are few steps that we need to follow at the time of designing the compensation and benefit structure the very first thing at the time of designing the compensation and benefit structure is the fixation of the base pay of that employee deciding and fixing the basic salary base pay of an employee base pay includes majorly the basic salary and the dearness allowance dearness allowance is applicable because dearness allowance is something which is majorly used in the public sector and not widely used in the private sector so this becomes the very first uh, step at the time of designing the compensation benefit structure that you need to decide the base pay of that employee and whenever you are uh, deciding the base pay of employee you should uh, you should always refer the minimum wage of that state that this basic salary should not be less than the minimum wage of that state for that scheduled employee right so once you have decided the basic salary the second step is to decide on the allowances you need to fix the allowances for that employee these allowances can be house rent allowance conveyance allowance medical allowance special allowance entertainment newspaper telephone vehicle maintenance loan there are many more allowances which are available that you can pick but what is the most important thing you need to consider at the time of fixation of allowance is that you need to check the tax applicability of those allowances so being an hr it's our responsibility to pick up those allowances which are majorly tax exempted either partially or fully right so whenever you are fixing the allowances you should always consider the tax applicability of that allowance right so this is the first step first step is to fix the base pay that includes the basic salary second is to fix the allowances once you have decided the first and second step you have decided the earning potential of that employee right majorly the gross salary you have decided the gross earning of that employee once you have decided the gross earning you have, now you have to decide on the statutory contributions and the retirements of that employee these majorly includes the provident fund employee state insurance act uh esic and bonus labor welfare fund and professional tax these are the statutory contributions and retirements which is a, uh, is also important at the time time of fixation of the compensation and benefits package this is the third step that statutory contribution and retirements includes both deductions and employer contribution parts once you have decided the statutory contribution retirements you need to specify the benefits that will be extended to that employee right these benefits can be any of the benefits which your company is following it depends upon the company's policy right 
these can be medical insurance life insurance club dental vision higher education and there are many more which we have discussed in the earlier slides and once you have decided the benefits if the position applies you need to fix the variable pay as well the variable pay we majorly fix for those positions which requires any specific target achievement right majorly the sales people or the marketing people we need to specify the variable pay for them as well these majorly named as the performance linked incentive retention bonus bonus on the company's performance is long term incentive right so the combination of all these five steps we design the complete compensation and benefits package right so for designing a compensation benefit package what steps we need to follow first to fix the base pay of the employee second to fix the allowances of the employee third to decide the statutory contribution and the retirements for that employee perks and benefit is fourth step fifth step is to fix the incentives and the variable pay for that employee right so these are the steps that we need to follow at the time of fixation of the compensation and benefit package of the employee now moving ahead so now you have understood about the steps that we need to follow at the time of fixation of the compensation and benefit now how do we actually calculate the gross pay or the net pay or the ctc what are the formulas for that so there are some very basic formulas that we need to for so these are so to decide the net pay of an employee we need to refer this formula how do we get the net pay uh, how do we get the gross salary the sum of basic salary plus allowances we get the gross salary the gross yeah. gross earning of an employee right sum of basic salary and allowances we get the gross earning of an employee and the second one is the how do we get the net pay of an employee so once we deduct the employee's contribution from the gross earning of an employee we get net pay of that employee and how do we get the ctc how do we calculate the ctc of that employee when we sum up the employer's contribution the company's contribution on behalf of that employee with the gross salary we get the cost to the company that is ctc right so these are the basic formula that we will also use in the excel as well at the time of designing of the compensation benefit structure in the excel now coming to the compensation model so there are three types of compensation models which are being used in the companies nowadays these are first one is the traditional compensation model traditional compensation model is the compensation model in which normally the company fixes everything right the company fixes the base pay of the employee as well and all the kind of allowances as well and there is no choice left to the employee to decide any of the allowances to pick up any of the allowances as per their expenditure or their uh, tds investment and all right so these kind of compensation structure where the company decides everything is known as the traditional compensation model second one is the flexible one the flexible compensation model is the compensation model in which uh, normally the company organization decide the base pay of the employee and all the allowances they usually leave up to the employee to decide to pick up according to their investments and their expenditures right so these kind of compensation model where the employee also have an option to pick up the uh, allowances to pick up some of the part of their salary as per their expenditures or their uh, uh, tax applicability these kind of compensation model is known as the flexible compensation model the third model is the combination of the traditional and the flexible right now what is the combination so it means that the major part of the compensation is decided by the organization so let's suppose uh, 50 60 70% of the compensation has been decided by the company that the company have decided the base pay also and some of the allowances as well and they have left one or two allowances to be picked up by the employee as per their requirements so this kind of uh, compensation model is known as the com com combination of traditional and the flexible compensation model now let's have a look on the examples of these kind of compensation model in the coming slide so here we are having an example of the traditional compensation model if you guys notice here the company have decided the basic salary also hra mobile internet office work so they have majorly decided the basic salary also and all kind of allowances also right so it means that they have decided almost the entire earning part of that employee right the basic salary and all allowances are also decided by the company only and there is no option left for the employee to be pick uh, to pick up as per their expenditure as per their requirement so this is an example of a traditional compensation model 
Now, here is an example of a flexible compensation model. Why flexible? Because if you notice here, the company have decided his base pay. They have decided his basic salary as 25,000 rupees and the rest of the allowances they have named as a flexi compensation. And they have given a figure of 35,000 that this amount of 35,000 can be picked up by the employee from the available basket of the allowances, right? This is the option given to the employee that he can pick up for this 35,000 from this available components. So this kind of a compensation model is referred as a flexible compensation model where the company usually do decide the base pay of the employee and all the allowances they leave up to the employee. And they provide the certificate. Hello. So this is the example of flexible compensation model, right? Now let's take a look to some of the actual offer letters, some of the actual annexures of the offer letters, which have been issued to the actual employees from the actual organizations and understand the concept of those CTC annexures. So if you see this CTC annexure on the first side, on the left side, so here the organization have decided everything, the base pay, HRA, CT compensation, LTA bonus, they have decided crops, they have decided on the deduction part also, and the CTC also, they have decided everything. So this is an example of what the, uh, the traditional compensation model, because the organization have decided everything. They, and there is no option left to the employee to pick up. But if you see in this red box, here, the company is giving some kind of uh, benefits to that employee. Huh? They, the company is giving the performance link incentive also to that employee, the local travel reimbursement to that employee, and the medical insurance also. So, all these benefits are given over and above the CTC that the company is offering to that employee. Right? So, this is the example of a traditional compensation model because there is no option uh, here for the employee to pick up their compensation. And also a very good example of a complete compensation and benefit system. Let me see. Why? Because here the benefit that the company is offering to this employee is over and above the CTC, right? So this is a good example of compensation and benefit. But if you notice here in this blue box that the company has given a note that this net take home salary is not the final take home salary. Why? Because there would be an additional deduction for the medical insurance from his salary. So these kinds of notes also becomes important whenever you are seeing your CTC election, go through these kind of notes as well. So this is not the final net take home salary of this employee. There would be a further deduction for the medical insurance policy. Now on this right side, if you see here, here again, if you, uh, you guys uh, yeah, must be thinking that this is an example of traditional compensation model, right? Because the company have decided everything, huh? basic salary decided, LTA decided, HRA decided, special allowance decided. Then how come this is the example of combination of uh, the compensation model, Why? Right? Because if you see this red box over here, the company has given an option for this even travel allowance. They have given this option to the employee that you can take this amount of 35,000 rupees with your monthly salary, or you can opt out to claim it at the time of actual expenses. So this kind of option is given to this employee over here from to, to decide on their wages. So this is the combination of the traditional and the flexible model. Moving to the next slide. Sure, this annexure A, if you see, this is the perfect example of flexi compensation model and a complete compensation and benefit model. Why so? Because here the company have decided on the base pay and for the uh, allowances, the company have named the flexi compensation and they have given this choice to employee only that you can pick up this five lakh and eight thousand rupees of allowances as per your requirement, as per your investments and all. Right. So this is a good example of a uh, flexi compensation model because the choice is given to the employee only. Now, again, why it is a very good example of a complete compensation benefit structure? Because there is nothing hidden in this structure. The company is giving all the benefits over and above the CTC. Nothing is included. All these benefits are over and above and not included under the CTC, right? Even the gratuity scheme is not the part of the CTC. They are giving the medical insurance, top up for the insurance, group personal accident, group uh, term life insurance, and the uh, gratuity scheme as well. And even gratuity is also not the part of CTC. All these benefits are over and above the CTC. So this kind of structure is a very good example of complete compensation and benefit structure, right? 
Now on the right side again, this is an example of flexi compensation model plus a complete compensation benefit model because here the company is getting the benefits over and above the CTC of that employee. Now here, this is an example of bad compensation model. Why so? Now this is an example of flexi compensation model because why? The company have decided basic HRA and for the allowances, the company have given a name of ad hoc allowance that the employee can pick up this ad hoc allowance as per their requirement, their expenditure. But this is a very bad compensation model. Why so? Because if you notice that base pay, HRA, ad hoc, provident fund, gratuity, all these are the part of what? Base salary. That is never possible. That is, uh, that is never done in this industry. Right? So this is not a good compensation model. On the right side also, if you see, they have not uh, made it clear that which kind of uh, which kind of component it, it is. If you see here, base pay is there, HR is there, special allowance is there, provident fund is there, crash it is there, and they have given it sum up above. What is this sum up above? It is a CTC or a cross pay or what? So you need to specify what kind of CTC structure it is. So the corrected version of that CTC structure is this, that you can write this kind of compensation model like in this way. You can decide the cross pay, you can fix the retirement part such as PF and gratuity, and then you can fix the CTC, right? We should avoid gratuity and provident fund making the part of base salary of that employee. Right? This is a bad practice. Now we are done with the uh, this uh, compensation and Excel part also. Now let's move to the Excel sheet for the live calculation of the CTC structure. For that, let me just open my Excel sheet. Okay, I hope my Excel is visible. Yes, it is. All right. All right. So, guys, this is the column. Okay. I'm having a format here for the CTC structure, right? So normally, you guys have seen this kind of format only for the compensation structure for the salary lectures, right? But now, in this format, how do we actually do the calculation? So, let me show you what the format is. In this format, we are having the components. In this component section, we'll specify the allowances and the other terminology such as uh, the statutory contributions and all then what amount we have decided for this component and then the annual uh, amount for this component right so what are the steps we have discussed for the fixation of a compensation model very first step was what to fix the basic salary of that employee right this is the very first step whenever you are designing the ctc structure of an employee the very first step that you need to do is to fix the base pay of that employee, like basic salary of that employee. And how do we do that? There are two factors that we need to consider at the time of fixation of basic salary. The very first thing is to check out the minimum wage of that state. So, so first of all, check the category of the employee for which you, uh, you are designing the CTC model, CTC uh, in Excel. Check out the category of that employee. That, that employee is falling in which category of, the, of your state's minimum wage. So according to your state's minimum wage, according to the employment category, check out the minimum wage for that employee. And you need to be sure that whatever basic salary you are fixing for this employee is either equals to or more than the minimum wage of that state for that scheduled employee of, uh, employment of that employee. Right? This is the first thing you need to check. Now, once, uh, once you are done with the checking of the minimum wage, you need uh, you can go with the second criteria that is 40 to 50 percent of the CTC. So, if you are uh, uh, there with this minimum wage thing, you can go on with 40 to 50 percent of criteria of. Thank 
<laughs> really sorry guys i got disconnected i'm back again anil sir please provide me the right to share my screen okay thank you did that did that dhiresh i hope my excel is visible all right so guys we were here we were designing the cpc structure of the employee so first step was to decide the basic salary of the employee to decide the basic Basic salary. You need to refer the minimum wage of that state. Once you have referred the minimum wage, you need to go with the 40 to 50 percent of criteria. You can take, uh, uh, you can fix the basic salary uh, salary from 40 to 50 percent of the CTC. Now, why 40 to 50 percent? So this is something that is universally accepted. There is no law which is saying that you should take 40 or 50 percent of the CTC. This is something which is usually practiced in the industry, and. and this is also because basic salary should be the higher component of all the allowances all the ctc allow, uh, all the components of your ctc structure right so this is also the reason why we take 40 to 50% of the ctc as the basic salary right so let's take 50% uh let's take the 50% criteria 50% of the ctc so the ctc amount multiplied by 50% right so we are trying to uh, design the ctc structure of this 20000 monthly ctc 20500 rupees is the monthly ctc that we need to offer to an employee and for that purpose we need to do a salary breakup as per all requirement and the statutory requirement right so the very first part is to decide the basic salary decide the gross salary of the employee then the employer's contribution will be there then we will decide the ctc then we'll do the deductions of the employee and then we'll come to the uh, net pay of it that is right so the very first step was to decide the basic salary for the basic we have checked the minimum wage and then we have taken the 50% of the monthly ctc of that employee that came around 10250 rupees now we are considering that this amount 10250 rupees is either equals to or more than the minimum wage of that state and we are complying with that criteria that we are not giving the basic salary less than the minimum wage of that state for that scheduled employee now once you are done with the basic salary the first step is done now you can go on with the allowances so i have taken three allowances over here as an example as i said whenever you are taking up the allowance you need to check the tax applicability also of those allowances so one of the very widely used allowance is the hra that is house rent allowance right now how do we pick up the house rent allowance so the criteria for the fixation of house rent allowance is that we can take up 40% of basic salary for the employees who are living in non metro cities and 50% of the basic salary for those employees who are living in the metro cities now why 40% why 50% why not 35% why not 55% you can take 35% also and 55% rules also this 40 50% criteria is on the basis of tax applicable right those employees who are living in non metro cities they can avail tax rebate up to 40% of basic salary on hra on house rent allowance so employees who are living in metro cities they can avail 50% up to 50% of basic salary as a tax rebate on the house rent allowance so this is the usually reason that why do we take 40 and 50% for metro and non metro cities we can, we are free to take up more than 50% also and to go below 40% also but if we go more than 50% only up to 50% would be tax tax exempted anything which is above 50% would be taxable right so that is the reason why do we take 40 and 50% of the metro and non metro city now considering that this employee is living in a metro city and for metro city we take up to 50% of the basic salary of hr so let's take that basic salary multiplied by 50% and we got the house rent allowance also calculated now the other allowances we are having is the telephone allowance and the special allowance now the tel telephone allowance there is no such rule that any percentage is decided that how do we fix up the tele telephone allowance you can take any of the actual amount that you are thinking that the employee is going to spend on this kind of uh, expenditure so any realistic figure you should pick up for the these kind of allowances like telephone allowance or the uniform allowance or the office wear allowance so you need to pick up any realistic amount and the figures for these allowances so i am taking a percentage criteria i am taking around 10% of basic salary as the telephone allowance which comes around 1025 that is quite okay because 1025 is a realistic figure for the telephone allowance now coming to the special allowance now 
I'm not going to take any amount over here. I'm not going to fix the special allowance right away. I'm going to keep this cell blank because I want this cell to be my adjusting cell. Let me just stop this thing. Okay, so I'm just going to keep this special allowance as blank, right? I'll keep the special allowance blank because I want this special allowance to be my adjusting cell huh? where I can adjust if there is any differences coming in what we are looking for and what we will finally achieve. So if there is any difference in that, we would try to adjust that difference in the special allowance. So let me just stop my sharing and start again. So that is why I'm going to keep this special allowance blank and let's move further. Then we'll come back again to the special allowance to take the amount for this allowance as well. Right, so once we have decided base pay and all the allowances of the employee, what we can calculate, we can calculate the cross sales of the employee, right? What is the formula for the cross salary? The formula is basic salary, basic salary plus all allowances, we get the cross salary. It means the sum of above, sum of, all these above components, we will get the gross pay of that, right? Now we have decided the gross earning capacity of the employee. Now it's time to fix the cost to the company. Now, what is the formula for the cost to the company? The formula is gross salary plus employer's contribution. The employer's contribution that is done in the statutory area, right? So there are two uh, statutory comp contribution which are normally, uh, normally applicable in every state that is the provident fund contribution and the ESI, employee state insurance contribution. And there are some other contribution also that are the labor welfare fund, but that is something which is applicable on the basis of state, right? In some states, the LWF is applicable. In some states, the LWF is not applicable. So that is why I'm going to take these two basic things. These are the PF and ESI, which is applicable in almost every state, right? So the first thing is to calculate the PF part of the employer, PF of the employer part. What is the rate of contribution of PF by an employer? The contribution rate is 13% of the PF wage. Now why 13%? You must be thinking that employer, employee both contribute 12%. Yeah, that's correct. But employer contributes 1% extra. That 1% goes in the EDLI and the PF admin charges, 0.5% in the EDLI, 0.5% in the uh, PF admin charges as well. So that is how it becomes total 13% as an employer's cost, right? 12 plus 1% of PF wage. Now what is PF wage? PF wage is the amount on which we calculate the PF contribution. Earlier we used to calculate PF on basic and DA, right? Earlier when I'm talking, so it's before September 2019. But in September 2019, there is a judgment given by the Supreme Court that uh, all the allowances are also eligible for the PF calculation, right? So after that Supreme Court's judgment, majorly the organizations have started calculating PF on either the full gross or gross minus HRS, right? But the most compliant way to calculate the PF is to calculate on the full gross and cap it to maximum 15,000. So even if somebody's full gross is 50,000, the PF cal calculation would be on maximum 15,000. So this is the relaxation given by the e e EPF only that you can limit your contribution at maximum 15,000 feet, right? Now considering all those criteria, let's do the calculation. Let's insert some formula so that it can calculate uh, uh, the EF contribution or any kind of CPC structure we are looking for, right? For that we would input the if function over here. Now if function is a logical test. If function is a logical test with two outcomes. First outcome, if the logical test is true. Second outcome, if the logical test is false. Right, so first uh, the logical test we are going to put in is the PF wage, the limiting part, right? That I want to limit my contribution at 15,000. So this is the logical test I want to put in over here. So if the PF wage, now I'm calculating on gross salary, I'm considering the gross salary as my PF wage, right? So if the PF wage, when I'm saying PF wage, it means the gross salary. So if the PF wage, this is the gross salary. If the PF wage of the employee is more than rupees 15,000, I want to limit it. If the PF wage of the employee is more than rupees 15,000, 
then I want to limit my contribution at what maximum fifteen thousand. This outcome is the out, uh, outcome when the uh, logical test is true. Second outcome would be when the logical test is false. So what would be the false criteria if the P of wage is either less than or equals to fifteen thousand rupees? So if it is criteria, I would like to calculate the P of on his actual P of wage bracket close multiply with the rate of contribution of employer. What is the rate of contribution of employer? That is the thirteen percent of the P of wage. Press enter and we got the employer's contribution calculated. On behalf of that employee, right? This is the first part of the statutory contributions we have done. The calculation of the PF, PF amount for the employee. Now, this, this, uh, the time is to calculate the ESI contribution again for the employer part, right? But for ESI, we always check the eligibility first. What is the eligibility criteria for ESI? The criteria is twenty-one thousand rupees gross salary. Any employee who is drawing gross salary either equals to Or less than rupees twenty one thousand per month is eligible for the ESI benefit, and uh, and those employees who are drawing wages more than rupees the gross salary more than rupees twenty one thousand are not eligible for ESI benefit. Hence, the contribution is also goes nil for them. There is no contribution for uh, those kind of employees who are not eligible for ESI. So I'm going to put in this eligibility criteria in the logical test here for the calculation of ESI, so that it will calculate all the uh, monthly CPCs automatically, right? So again, I'm going to put in the if function over here. Again, the if function is the logical test. This time, I want to use this eligibility criteria as the logical test and want my outcome, right? So if the gross salary of the employee is more than rupees twenty-one thousand, then so anyone who is drawing Gross salary more than rupees twenty one thousand. That person is not eligible for ESI. Hence, the contribution is zero for that employee. This is the first outcome when the logical test is true. Second outcome when the logical test is false. False would be the criteria when the gross salary either equals to or less than rupees twenty one thousand. In that situation, I want to calculate his ESI contribution on his actual gross salary. Bracket close multiplied by. The rate of contribution. Now, what is the employer's rate of contribution in ESI? It is 3.25 percent of the gross salary, right? 3.25 percent of the gross salary. Press enter, and we got the ESI contribution also calculated for the employer. Now, once we have calculated the PF and ESI of employer part, means the statutory contribution of the employer part. Now we can calculate the CTC, right? What is the formula for CTC? The formula is Gross salary plus sum of the employer's contribution. Gross salary plus sum of employer's contributions. We get the CTC. All you guys be, uh, must be thinking that the CTC we were looking for was twenty thousand five hundred, but the CTC we got is not the same, right? That is the reason we uh, we have kept the special allowance blank huh, for the adjustment of the differences. Right. We'll come to this special allowance. Let's first insert all the formulas and calculate uh, calculate the net pay also. Right. Now to calculate the net pay, we need to calculate the employees part also. Employees statutory contribution part also. That is the deductions of the employee. Right. That again is for the ESI and the PF. Right. So we again need to type in the formulas. No, we don't need to type in the formula. So if we are calculating the PF of the employee, we just need to go to the employer PF contribution. Cell, copy the formula. Come back to the employees cell, paste the formula, change the rate of contribution. What is So deductions here are the contribution done by the employee will be deducted from the cross sell. Right. Bracket close. Press enter. We got the net pay also calculated. Now, now coming to the CTC. 
we have designed the infrastructure here we have designed the frame for the ctc calculation now we can do the plus minus to reach to this ctc figure that we were looking for right so this is the ctc figure that we were looking for and this is the outcome we have got it's not equal to what we were looking for so let's first check out the difference there was a difference for, uh, in what we were looking for and what we have got right so just print a plus enter we got the difference here as 1617 rupees so this is the difference so what if i put this figure in the special allowance are we going to reach this amount let's check that 1617 is the difference that i have just inserted in the special allowance press enter and still there is a difference of 53 minus 53 rupees now, now let's try to adjust this again and follow the steps huh? minus 53 press enter again we need to add 2 rupees here again go to the cell plus 2 enter finally we have reached to this 20,500 CPC that we were looking for finally this difference is zero. so that is how usually the companies calculate the CPC structure for their employees right now there is an easier way to do this right what is the easier way we have designed a CTC calculator over here. If you see, all these amounts are zero, but all these cells are formula driven. There are formulas inserted in all these cells. Now, how did we insert the formula again? Using the same concept we have used just now. Depending upon the PFES, ILWS applicability, and depending upon the, upon the allowances applicability for the text and all. So depending upon those things, we have inserted formulas in each cell. And we have uh, designed an automated CTC calculator. And how does this calculator work? Now let's check that how does this calculator work. So for the calculation of CTC on this automated sheet, you just need to go into data. In data, you will find an option of what if analysis. In what if analysis, there is an option of goal C. So this is the thing we are going to use over here. That is the goal C, right? Goal C asks for three things. First is asked to set the cell where we want our outcome right set the cell where we want our outcome so this is the cell where we want our outcome because we want to calculate the ctc so this is the ctc cell where we want our outcome second to set the value what you are looking for so let's suppose now at current we are looking for a ctc of uh, 60,000 60,000 monthly ctc that is the ctc amount we want to calculate and third thing it asks for assign a cell where you want to make the calculations right so here this time i want to assign this basic salary as the cell where it will make all the calculation and why basic salary because all the allowances all the uh, contributions also depends upon the basic salary based of that part. right press okay now let's see what happens see done the calculation is done all the statutory contributions and other thing has been calculated for the employee CTC amount is 60,000 what we were looking for. So now this is the benefit of this automated CTC calculator when you insert all the formulas in advance and just assign whatever you are looking for. Let's try out, try out some other figure. Now let's suppose again we have to set the cell where we want the outcome to the cell where I, where I want my outcome. And uh, this time I'm looking for a CTC of 75,000 rupees by changing cell, assign the cell where it will make calculation. This is the cell where I want my calculation to be done. Press OK. Now see this calculation has been done. In seconds, it happens. So this is the one uh, one time activity that you need to design this calculator. Now this, after that, your task becomes very easy. Right? Now let's take some very odd figure that we do not usually offer to employees. Huh? Some kind of uh, monthly CTC amount that we usually do not offer employees. And let's try if this CTC calculator can calculate those kind of uh, uh, CTC amount as well. So let's take a figure of 1,89,765,1. This is the CTC amount that we are looking for huh. by changing cell. So first of all, we need to assign where I'm looking for. So this is the C12, correct, by changing cell. So this is the basic cell where I want this calculation to be done press ok see we got whatever we are looking for so this is the one time activity uh, you need to do at the time of designing the ctc calculator after that 
your your work becomes very easy right guys so this is what we actually do in our actual classes also we also discuss in detail right this kind of ctc calculation we discuss in detail using all kind of statutory contributions such as labor welfare fund then the professional tax pds and all full and final settlements using all those things we design the ctc structures we also discuss on the calculation of monthly salary of the employee how do we calculate the monthly salary of the employee how do we formulate this kind of automated ctc structure how do we formulate this kind of automated bulk ctc calculator so let's suppose if you have to generate the offer letters of around 100 employees yeah with the ctc and make sure in that offer letter how do you do that so you can use this kind of automated bulk ctc calculator and you can uh, link this with the mail merge and you can generate multiple offer letters with the ctc and make sure in just simple clicks right then we also uh, teach in detail uh, the monthly payroll process using all the kind of possibilities like overtime full and final settlement reimbursement of the employees and xyz whatever you can think of at the time of payroll processing we consider all those cases and we uh, teach how to do the monthly payroll in excel this this entire payroll is automated you just need to change this paid days and this entire calculation will be done automatically with the help of formulas right then we also teach how to do the tds calculation now tds is also we are having a separate section for the tds calculation how do you design a ctc uh, tds calculator there are two tax regimes and how do you pick up the tax regime which is beneficial for that employee considering all kind of rebates and sections which are available under tds right so all these things we do in our actual uh, uh, course classes right i'm just moving to this slide we have just finished right guys so till now we have discussed that what is compensation that benefit how it is designed understood the components of the uh, compensation benefit we have uh, gone through some of the actual offer letters and then we do it, did a live ctc and lecture preparation i am done with today's uh, demo session guys now you guys are free to ask your questions anything which is related to today's demo session or anything which is related to our course right this is the last uh, poll we are having over here this is the combination of entire thing we have discussed till now the question is a compensation structure should address which of the following at objectives the options are compliance with the labor law less burden to employers in term of cost less tax liability and more enhanced salary for the employees and all the above right so i'm just launching this last poll and you guys can provide your inputs the poll is live now and you can share your inputs on this question the question is a compensation structure should address which of the following objectives the options are compliance with labor laws less burden to employer in term of cost less tax liability and more enhanced salary for the employee or all the above you all can share your inputs and then we'll move to the course detail slides and where you can ask your all doubts questions related to the course or anything which is related to today's demo so we have got 60% of votes till now in which 59% the majority is saying the all the above are correct yes so guys so this is the correct answer all these factors are important you need to consider at the time of designing of a ctc structure thank you for your inputs i'm just ending this poll and let's move to the next slide right guys so these are the details these are the contact details of uh, mine and anil sir if you want to uh, have the further details you can call us for this and these are the course details right so these are the three modules that we cover up statutory compensation compensation benefit recruitment selection the charges for each module is 1500 rupees each discounted price is 3500 rupees of all these modules right we uh, we conduct sessions on saturdays and sundays timings are 4 pm to 6:30 pm there would be total 10 sessions right one month and a week total 10 sessions anything else you guys want to ask related to today's demo session please feel free to ask you can unmute your mics and ask your questions we provide the dedicated study materials for each uh, topics we provide the recordings of all the sessions and uh, we take up all the queries uh, after the sessions also during mondays to fridays
Kanika, you are asking that how to register if you want to opt out for this. You just need to make the payment of uh, anything which you are uh, picking up. Share the screenshot with us with your email ID, and we will share you the details of the upcoming session. Huh? The details of the Zoom link and all. Yes, you can show the other slides, Dheeraj, also where we conduct uh, with colleges and the kind of certificates which we issue. So, guys, this. Is the the format of certificate that we issue to our students? This Nikhil Pandey is our former student who has completed this one month course with us, and he has shared his achievement on LinkedIn. After that, then we have conducted a webinar with Aligarh Muslim University as well uh, on the topic of the compensation benefit management. Webinar with the Siddhi Vinayak uh, uh, Manage Management School. these are some of the testimonials some of the appreciations given by our ex students please ask you questions guys if you have any doubts anything that you want to ask uh, there is there is one question by uh, uh, shalu gupta Uh, she is asking do you provide any training to experienced hr professionals so uh, shalu uh, we would like to tell you that we have had uh, students experienced ranging till 15 years and who have benefited from the various uh, sessions that were conducted especially the labor laws uh, session because um, it is attuned to the new changes that has been done and it is also customized to the uh, workable solution and we provide how we make these laws workable or to the hr professional so i hope this satisfies your question pamira is asking when will be the and next class yes ma'am please continue and also uh, she wants to know which areas are included dheeraj if you could show that uh, uh, yeah so uh, the course content has been displayed by dheeraj so it's on the screen guys these, these are the three modules uh, and guys this is the perfect time to enroll because from this saturday we would be starting from the beginning that is from the statutory and the legal compliances we'll be uh, taking the new batch so this is the per perfect time to start with you'll we'll start from the first session Yeah. Oh, okay there is one question by shravni is this course a purely online class yeah this is a purely online class all the classes are conducted online but you have the benefit of getting the course content you can see the recording of the live sessions so after attending the question also if you want to refresh or you want to have some doubts cleared you can uh, see the content and also you can be in touch with dheeraj channel sir uh to know uh, the details uh dheeraj if you could uh, tell a little bit more about the fee structure and how the fee structure is uh, yeah, uh, sure. done there is one question regarding that yes So guys, if you opt out for any one module or two module, the charges are like fifteen hundred rupees each module, right? That makes around forty five hundred for all three. The discounted price that we are offering is thirty five hundred rupees for all three modules. For module one, two, and three, the discounted price is thirty five hundred rupees only. Dheeraj, there is a question on duration of course. Yeah, so sir, guys, the duration is total ten sessions. We would be conducting total ten sessions. Each session would be of two hours and thirty minutes. Time would be from four pm to six pm. We conduct classes on weekends only, Saturdays and Sunday, right? So considering the Saturday Sunday classes, there would be total ten sessions, and the entire duration would be of around one month and a week.
Any further question, guys? Yeah, will certificate? Yes, Yashi, we would be providing the certificate of completion. That certificate is majorly uh, uh, the ISO 9001 and 2015 certified. Right, so this is how that certificate looks. If you see here, this is the certificate that we issue, certificate of completion. This kind of certificate we issue to our every uh, students once the completion of the course. Uh, Dheeraj, if you could tell about the mode of payment, there are two questions regarding that. Guys, all options are there. Uh, you can directly visit to our website. There is a pay now option from there also. You can make the payment or you can just contact us. We will share you the details of all modes. You can pay through UPI, phone pay, Paytm, direct bank transfer. So all modes are available. You just need to contact us or directly visit to our website for the payment. Take down this uh, There is a question by... Uh -huh. There is a question by Shalu uh, regarding HR analytics. So Shalu, we do not have a dedicated uh, course for HR analytics, but yes, uh, we are in future. We would be adding few more course uh, to it. So maybe in future we might have a course on the HR analytics. Uh, Mr. Devendra Kumar has one question. Is there any theoretical knowledge? So if you could please explain what you mean by theoretical knowledge, we could be better able to answer your question. Can you please come again, ma'am? I just missed out that. Uh, so there is one question that uh, is there any theoretical knowledge? So uh, definitely uh, we have we have theories, the, whatever uh, uh, co uh, content that we have is based on the theory, but it has been made uh, more on a practical approach. So you have the theory which has been given to you in the course content, but the uh, uh, courses are designed to be more practical oriented so that more working knowledge, you get more of working knowledge. Yes, so I think uh, Sri uh, Simran has rightly said that it covers the practical part along with the theories. It definitely, uh, because we have to touch up the theories, otherwise uh, the content will be too vague. So we have a solid uh, theoretical base, uh, based on the theoretical part, the practical uh, content is developed. So there is one question related to placements after the completion of course by uh, Hiteshri. So see, uh, we do not uh, guarantee you that you know you will. Uh, we will be giving you opportunities, but yes, we are uh, basically a placement company. So we have a lot of HR vacancies coming our way. So we uh, do refer our uh, students onto that positions because we know the content of the student and you know we can recommend them. So definitely we assist and we give 100% assistance, uh, but uh, winning a job is definitely a candidate's, uh, is based on the candidate's capability. Yes, Pooja has raised his, uh, her hand. Uh, yes, Pooja, you want to ask any, uh, you have any question? Okay, guys, uh, uh, we would be sending you today's recording. You would be getting a mail from us and the mail would also be containing the course detail uh, um, 
and the module detail whatever topics we would be covering in the course the duration of the course is 10 classes classes happens on weekend only saturday and sunday so if there is saturday and sunday saturday sunday like there would be total 10 classes after the class uh, we we would be giving study material on each and every topic we would also be giving classroom recording of each and every classes which we conduct so even if you miss the class or even if you attend the class you would be getting the recording of the class at the end of day which you can attend as per your convenience and at the end of the course there is a certificate which is iso 9000 certified from this saturday which is 26 september we are starting from module 1 and we have close to 30 32 students currently we have already the more than 200 has done this course and in the current batch we have close to 32 students and uh, i guess uh, uh, if you have any question please feel free to ask or should we close for today so uh, simran uh, we do give the soft copy of uh, the study material yes study Hard material copy. yes for every topic you would be getting the pdf yeah. study material you would be getting the working sheet so that you can practice and then you would also, also be getting the classroom yes. recording wo ab jab chahe tab aap usko attend kar sakte hain we have shared you the youtube link where you can go and see few live classes and few demo classes so that you would be able to understand how the classes are conducted what is the way we teach whether you would be able to understand the class or not and you can also see how the live questions and asked are asked and we answer those query so ek bar main fir se share kar deta hu Uh, आपको यूट्यूब और लिंकिंग का एंड एज द फर्स्ट नंबर द नंबर विच इज फ्लैशिंग ऑन योर स्क्रीन एट सेवन डबल जीरो इज धीरे सर नंबर द फाइव टाइम्स नाइन वाला सेकेंड वाला नंबर इज माई नंबर फील फ्री टू रीच एस फॉर एनी क्लैरिफिकेशन एनी डिट मोर डिटेल एंड आई एम ट्राइंग टू फाइंड रीड आउट द चार्ट look when i mean we have got uh, wisdom from all streams and all kind of experience as preeti said that we had people having 15 years experience also so when you work in a corporate you know, the chances are very limited that you get an opportunity to work in each and every area of hr somebody is good at recruitment but statistically compliance is something which is missing at all so in this way we are trying to we have tried to cover the major important area of hr hr business profile and these are considered to be the biggest and most important function of hr you would be able to understand each and every area of law then compensation and benefit which is again a very important uh, function the recruitment and selection you will find a dedicated and separate dedicated department who takes care of entire talent acquisition so Uh, feel free to come back to us for any kind of detail, any kind of inquiry regarding the course. And from this Saturday, we are starting the course. And by today, by late nights, uh, late night we would be sending you a mail which would be containing the today's recording and the detail about the course. 